Today we're going to be talking about the SEC versus cryptocurrency. The SEC is coming after cryptocurrency. They're now in a lawsuit with a brand new crypto project called Library. First they came after Ripple. This lawsuit is still ongoing and now they're going after the Library project or the LBC token. This is incredible. We're also going to hear from one attorney who says that this has much farther implications and possibly could include something like bitcoin down the road he doesn't rule that out or it could be catastrophic for cryptocurrency and enough people are not paying attention to this ladies and gentlemen so i when you follow me on this channel i cover a lot of things i talk about how we can earn more money with cryptocurrency what are the different ways to be able to do that i talk about you know understanding the technology of cryptocurrency and why this technology has a future and i also like to talk about what the government's doing that is helpful or hurtful to cryptocurrency as a whole I cover a broad range of topics. Not everyone covers this type of content, but I want you to be in the know. I want you to be prepared, and I want you to have an idea of what this technology is doing because, ladies and gentlemen, I believe cryptocurrency is the future. I believe this is technology that is going to change the world, and if you believe in that, do me a favor and smash that like button. All right, so let's let's get into this. Let's quickly look at the library credits token. Look at where it's at. Currently trading at 23 cents. Actually, let me refresh this. It was uh, higher. Okay, there we go. 23 cents it's currently trading at. When this lawsuit was announced, when I first mentioned it on the channel in a previous video a couple weeks ago, it was trading at about, I want to say it was 26 or 27 cents, so it has pulled back a little bit. However, since that announcement, it also has traded as high as 41 cents, so it's a little bit volatile. It has been up and it hasn't been down. I'm currently holding the token. I'm a long-term holder of this token. Full transparency. What I like about the library platform, just so you know, it is a fully decentralized blockchain project that is best decentralized alternative to something like YouTube. They are fully functional. They are fully decentralized. The back end is incredible. And there's, there's so much to talk about the technology, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. I want you to take a listen to what these lawyers had to say and about the further implications of what could happen with this technology. But very quickly, before we go there, I want to show you what it looks like. So Odyssey is the front end platform to the library blockchain. Library is the blockchain. Library is the distributed ledger. Using sharding technology with the blockchain is how the videos are hosted. Don't ask me to get more technical than that because I can't fully comprehend much more than that. Uh, but just to give you an example, you could create your own, if you have the technical know-how, Odyssey front end. You could put only your creators that you like to follow, like Crypto Wealth over here I over here on Odyssey. You could create your own videos and create your own front end. The library at its core is the distributed or decentralized back end. That's what it is at its core. The It's a decentralized video file hosting. Let's talk about what these law. Let's look, go back and look at what these lawyers are saying. By the way, this is Viva Fry. I like his channel. Recommend that you check it out. They don't typically talk about just crypto stuff, but when this came up, I thought this is very interesting. When I, as soon as I saw them talking about library, because not enough people are talking about this. But let's listen to what they have to say and listen to some of what they say regarding how this could aff affect future crypto projects. The token is not a stock. You, you, you don't have any right to profit participation. No right so to profit. So it might be right out of the gate. It, number two, it's not a contract. You don't sign a contract. You don't I mean, do it. Doesn't no, they're talking about the library token. The library token does not pay dividends. And the, and the thing is, there are tokens that do pay dividends. And and I, we've talked about those on this channel. I love tokens like the BFG token and all these different types of tokens that pay dividends for holding the token. Even staking tokens could should the fcc choose if they can go after something like if they can go after something like library which doesn't even offer profit participation in any way shape or form if they can do that with library then they can go after some of these other tokens i mean this is starts to get a very become a very slippery slope i want to back this up just a little bit i just want to point that out too it's not a contract you don't sign a contract you don't well, do yeah, it doesn't entitle so you it's to not a security it's not a security contract not governed by the sec and no, obviously no voting uh no not no right, none of that i mean this now notice he said voting you know there's plenty of cryptos one of my favorites the one inch token for example part of their decentralization is you get to vote on proposals that's part of the decentralization so ladies and gentlemen if you read between the lines here okay so library should be in the clear because they don't offer dividends no profit participation in any way shape or form they don't and by the way they don't they don't buy back and burn so there's literally no profit participation projects who buy back and burn like cro who knows could they be in the crosshairs later because that 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 buyback comes from you know in a, in a roundabout way profit participation could it be stretched that far voting rights that's governance tokens library doesn't have voting rights but other projects do 
That's interesting. One inch, I love that token, but you get part of their governance token, you get to vote on proposals and you get to earn governance fees based on the usage of the platform. See how this starts to get to be a very slippery slope. This is a crazy, their interpretation is if you're doing anything to raise money, they even put this in the Ripple case. If you sell something, number one, two, that raises money for you, then three, it's a security contract. Well, that, that covers a ridiculous range of things. So uh, the the goal is simply to wipe out uh, crypt, uh, any digital currency they don't like. Wipe out any digital currency they don't like. I've been talking about this for years on my channel. I've been saying for a long time, the government as a whole is never going to be friendly to crypto for several reasons. A, they don't want competition to a traditional system and even companies that don't compete with traditional systems, but something like library, for example, you don't think Google, YouTube, they don't have their own lobbying firms hired in Washington. They don't want competition from something like library. So that hurts crypto there. This is stuff that's important. We're going to talk about what you can do about this. You and I, average citizens on the planet, what we can do about it, but let's continue. And while right now they've acknowledged Bitcoin is an exception, there's no guarantee they will constantly do that. Oh, Catch that. That was important. He says right there about Bitcoin, because a lot of people think Bitcoin's in the clear. Bitcoin's in the clear. There's no guarantee that Bitcoin stays in the clear. They've acknowledged Bitcoin is an exception. There's no guarantee they will constantly do that. Only the big role of institutional investors is backing them off from that. So he's saying the big the, the inst institutional money for now is backing them off of that. There's no guarantee that Bitcoin's untouchable. And a lot of people think that it is. Well, they don't cover in this lawsuit, and I'm going to get to one more thing they said here. What they don't cover in this video is that in the lawsuit, the SEC specifically says that a blockchain project with ongoing development that has a token can be considered a security. By that logic, that's Ethereum, ladies and gentlemen. Bitcoin doesn't have ongoing development like that per se, but definitely Ethereum definitely has ongoing development. That is, ladies and gentlemen, You've got to be aware of this. Don't stick your head in the sand. When I say that Bitcoin or cryptocurrency could drop by 50%, 80%, 90%, it's because any day it is possible we could see draconian measures that could limit or put strong regulations on cryptocurrency. And you and I don't have to sell, but if enough big money sells, the whole market can tank. If all of a sudden Elon Musk comes out and says, hey, I love crypto, but it's just not a friendly environment. The government's not letting us doing it. So I'm going to have to sell my crypto. And he sells his Bitcoin. Something like that could tank. Elon Musk wants to protect his finances from the government, which is why he got into Bitcoin. He's not trying to take on the government head on. He's not trying to get into that fight. He's, Elon Musk isn't here for your financial freedom, your financial security, your financial independence. He's here to protect his company. So if all of a sudden he tweeted like that, oh my goodness, that could be catastrophic. Something as simple as that, and that's just one person may, who's a public figure. If he can make Dogecoin rise, he can make Bitcoin price sink. So the stuff like that's worth being aware of as an investor. So you have to invest with the mindset of this could go down drastically. I want, I want you to hear one more thing they had to say. I mean, it doesn't meet the traditional definition of a security. That doesn't meet the traditional definition of a contract. Definitely doesn't meet the traditional definition of a security contract. So they're, they're still talking about the LBC token. And they're saying they can still do it if it involves fundraising. If Are you making profit? Are you fundraising? Are you selling something that we can somehow call a security, even though it doesn't seem to meet any traditional definitions or limits? All right, well, that's very fascinating. Now I understand the exposure of this uh, complaint and lawsuit. Potential broad, right broad impact. Too few people are paying attention to it. Too few people are paying attention to it. That is correct. Smash that like button. Let's get some more people paying attention to this. Uh, the bigger question is this also. The SEC as the entity, this is the administrative state. I mean, what the intentions here are obviously for government to centralize control over all currencies and to eliminate any yeah. uh, The parallel. same SEC that became deeply concerned about broadly expanding what inside information meant to go after the GameStop folks on Wall Street bets. That's who these folks are. Can a company still can a company sell a gift card at a discount? Uh, they will make rules as needed. No, th this sounds uh, crazy. So I think, maybe, lose. I think the courts will reject this because uh, it, it's too broad, too far, even for the courts to adopt. Uh, but what was the precedent that you had mentioned earlier that expanded the SEC's powers that the ship has sailed? Oh, the ship has sailed, and that it doesn't have to be a publicly traded stock. Okay, just promoted to the public.
I mean, the part where he said he didn't think they were win, I tend to agree with this, and I hope he's right. But there's no guarantee of this, ladies and gentlemen. There's just no guarantee. So what can we do? Two things. I think that it's important for you as an individual. By the way, if you want to follow me on Odyssey, I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put this full video down in the description as well, so you can watch that. A couple of things. I want to talk about two things. First, what can you do um, about this ongoing litigation, this ongoing lawsuit? Because I think it's important if you care about freedom, if you care about uh, the, the independence of your, your own financial independence, I think it's important to be aware aware of and I think it's important for us to take some action. Second thing, what can you do as an investor in this space? Again, none of this is financial advice. Well, if you are first and foremost, if you want to know what you can do about this and, and how you can kind of sort of help and speak out and, and be aware, I would say make share this sort of content, maybe this video, other videos, share this sort of content on your social media. It's, you've got to get the word out. The reason I titled this specifically SEC versus cryptocurrency is because it, that's exactly what it is. I didn't make this video, oh, the SEC comes after a library because it's so much bigger than a library. And most people won't watch the video just about library. They don't even know what library is. They don't even know they should care about it. Most people don't even know how good of a product project it is. This thing is still flying under the radar partially why I'm holding the token. Not financial advice, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take financial advice from a YouTube commentator. That's the worst thing on the planet. Don't do that. As someone who cares about this message, that's the one thing you can do. The second thing is they have a video, Help Libraries Save Crypto. They have a website, Help Libraries Save Crypto. This is an incredible website. Naomi Brockwell did a great video. It's a short video. It's only eight or nine minutes. I recommend that you watch it. Come through, just read through this uh, webpage sign the petition petition the biggest thing here is just to create some awareness now i actually did reach out to the ceo through email and he did promise me once they win this lawsuit he'll come on this channel and we'll do a full interview about library and maybe even about the lawsuit whatever we can legally talk about at that point so make sure you subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss it but more importantly let's get this information out there let find out what's the big deal. What is the, what is the SEC actually doing in this case? Come to help Library Save Crypto and find out. Now, as an investor, what do you do knowing that is it possible that the entire cryptocurrency market could be at risk or any project could be at risk through some sort of negative government regulations? Because I do believe that is the greatest risk to the price of crypto across the board. Right now, Bitcoin just crossed over, what, 60,000 or something crazy? Okay, we're just at 59,000. Uh, Bitcoin's over 2000 Binance is over $500. My trading bots are killing it right now. Uh, right, And I'm, I'm going to be talking about those later on the channel as well. I have no content on trading right now or trading bots, but that, be on the lookout for that coming up. What can you do? So I, I was just to let you know, I was at a, a business dinner last evening, a business party, and all of a sudden I had so many people coming out and asking like you know about cryptocurrency and i couldn't believe it like i could not believe the amount of people that were interested to understand technology why bitcoin matters why ethereum matters what why blockchain matters and it was very interesting i unintentionally had this room captivated just talking about stuff and and it just blew my mind at how many people were in this and they all kept saying things like what should we buy what should we buy well if you follow my channel, you know I don't give financial advice. But I gave them the same advice then that I would give you now, particularly knowing that the price could go up and could go down radically depending on what legislation comes out or what regulation comes out in the future. I recommend that you dollar cost average. This means set aside a part of your budget that you don't mind if it goes to zero or it's not going to cause you to lose sleep. You recognize that that is a real possibility. Of course, we all mind if it goes to zero, but you know that that's a real possibility. When I tell my wife, when I invest in crypto, consider it an expense until the end of the year when we do our taxes. Consider it an expense. That That's not coming back into our accounts. Just understand that. And the biggest reason, there's two reasons. One is because it's so volatile, I don't want her to worry about it or pay attention to it. It's just uh, cryptocurrency goes up and down without reason sometimes. The second reason is because I know that it we may go through a major 80%, 60%, 50% downturn. I do know that's possible. Every couple of years, that, that could be possible right now. Crypto has done it. I mean, many of us who have been in this market since the last bull cycle, we saw, you know, go from almost 20,000 all the way down to like 4,000. We saw that. There's no reason now that we couldn't go from 60,000 down to 10,000 or lower, possibly 5,000. Who knows? That is possible, particularly depending on what regulations the government puts forward eventually. So, and, and whether the SEC actually wins these lawsuits, that's still to be determined whether uh, Ripple's going to win or whether L Library is going to win. And by the way, these lawsuits could take several months and possibly several years 
So it's, I'm going to continue to follow it on this channel. But knowing that, the question is, so do I wait? Do I wait and not invest now? Someone said, Bitcoin's up really high. Do I not buy now? And I said, that's your call. But I do recommend that whatever you buy, you dollar cost average. Set aside a weekly or monthly budget and buy it. The idea is you're not going to buy the highest prices. You're not going to buy the lowest prices. You just consistently buy a little bit with money that you understand is at extreme risk. If you're not willing to recognize that your money is at extreme risk, then I would recommend that you educate yourself on the risk of the US dollar. And until you can wrap your mind around that, don't invest in cryptocurrency, just hold dollars if you think that that somehow is less risky. So ladies and gentlemen, just understand the SEC is coming after cryptocurrency. I see that as directly they're coming after you. They're coming after me. They're coming after our financial freedom. They're coming after our technological revolution because decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.